Good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. How are you doing? Have you had a good week? We're having a pretty great week here. It's frigid cold, but it's clear. Blue sky. It's beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. And I know some of you are battling snow and you're frigid cold too. And actually your frigid cold is way more cold than our frigid cold. I say I'm frigid cold, but we're barely below freezing. Uh, I think today we're hitting actually over freezing. I think we're like 35 or 36 or something like that. I don't know. Uh, but it's getting down to the 20s at night. That is cold. But rest assured, when school starts next week, the temperatures are back up. It's normal. We should be in our normal range of 40 to 60, which will be so comfortable and so fabulous. Welcome to Wednesday, the Valentine's recap. We've got a full house with us, I bet. In the studio, we're light today because we have no classes, and so we're kind of coasting through. We have Parker with us on tech, and he'll be monitoring the YouTube questions. And then we have teacher Marisa with us on the Facebook questions. Then virtually, we've got Caledonia on Facebook and Susie on YouTube. and. Leanne here up front to chat with you about the Valentine's recap. If you're watching on your phone, turn it sideways so it's bigger. If you are at work and you're not supposed to be watching on your phone, just set it down and I'll say, okay, what do you think? And then you know to peek real quick, um, but at least you'll be able to follow along by sound. If you're on your computer, go to full screen. That way you can get a little bigger. And if you're at home watching me on your TV, that's larger than life. Don't go any bigger than that. That's kind of scary. We've got so much to cover today, lots and lots of things to share with you. I've talked to so many tulips, some in the group that have left me messages, some that emailed, some that private messaged, some that called, some that I actually ran into walking around, which is kind of fun. And so I heard your stories. And today we want to talk about what I've heard and kind of what happened with the holiday and what worked, what didn't work as well, but focused more on the successes as to what did work well and what can you do moving forward to prepare yourself for next Valentine's Day and for the coming holidays. You've got St. Patrick's, Easter, uh, administrative assistants, I started to say secretary, and then the big one, Mother's Day, and then the wedding season, which some of the preparation and organization translates over to wedding and event as well. So we'll be talking about all of that, kind of gearing, gearing up. Uh, the one thing that I heard unanimously from people was they were very happy with their early preparation. And early preparation included getting things pre-greened. People were pre-greening two weeks ahead if they had the refrigeration and a full week ahead even if they didn't have enough refrigeration because the foliage will last. So picking a vase that holds enough water to keep your foliage fresh and fabulous and then going ahead and doing that pre-greening weeks ahead so that you're ready and you're not doing that at the last minute. Another tip that I heard from many was being flexible with their types of foliage and not limiting themselves to just the standards so that as supply chain issues came up, it didn't matter because they were prepared to use all different types of foliages and just adjust so that they might start with salal, but then they're adding in the variegated New Zealand pittosporum, or maybe some ruscus, or maybe fatsia leaves. And I found that many of you found that the more foliage varieties they used, the happier their clients were because it looked so interesting and the happier they were because they didn't have to panic, oh, I didn't get blah, 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 whatever it is. They could just say, well, look at this. We have beautiful foliage and it's all done and it's all ready to go. 
So that early preparation, that was unanimous across the board. But I heard from almost everyone that made this holiday smoother and easier. That was a kind of a cool one. Now this holiday was unique for me in that David and I actually went out of town. I know, a florist out of town, not working on the holiday. It did feel decadent, I'll be honest. But what made it even more wonderful is David was at the gym doing his annual workout every morning. He's there, he's Mr. Religious about his workout. So he's at the gym. And of course, I'm still in my pajamas in the room because I don't go to the gym. And knock, knock, knock on the door. I'm like, who's knocking on my door at a hotel? How weird is that? So I go and look through the little peephole. It was a flower delivery. Can you believe it? David had ordered Valentine's flowers for me delivered to the hotel on Valentine's Day. But what was unique and special that was well, unique and special is that a florist got flowers. That was pretty great. But what made it even better, this delivery arrived before 10 in the morning. You that are working florists know how hard that is. And it was beautiful. Parker, do you have that picture? I didn't take a picture of it, and I wanted to put it up. And this is a flower arrangement that was delivered to my hotel room. That's the lamp in the hotel room. And it's from a shop in Palm Springs that's called My Little Flower Shop. And do you know that picture was taken on day five? Oh, wow. So that's five days old. And look how beautiful it is. So go ahead and put it back up here. But what I found is that that arrangement typified another thing that Tulip shared with me, and that mixed arrangements were a better seller and a better value to their clients than a rose arrangement. Which that makes a lot of sense and makes it longer lasting. Less opportunity for price comparison between the different sources that are selling flowers because everybody's mixed arrangement is a little bit different. The My Little Flower Shop arrangement was horizontal, elongated, with a real strong emphasis, so paid attention to the elements and principles. It did have some roses in the emphasis, but that was secondary to the whole arrangement. The arrangement had stock and snapdragons and hydrangea, spray roses, regular roses. I don't remember what else, but it was stunning. Absolutely gorgeous. So shout out to My Little Flower Shop for making my Valentine's Day so spectacular. and. Thank you to all you tulips that shared your insight. So backing up, pre-green. You can do this a week ahead. You can do it two weeks ahead. Consider mixed arrangements as opposed to the standard dozens because then you don't have that comparison. One tulip shared that they had purposely looked for all kinds of different vessels. So there was no point of comparison again. Yes, that would be more expensive, but it's a unique vessel. That's not one that you would expect. And so where they might see this at every flower shop in town, they wouldn't see this one at every flower shop in town. And they also pointed out that as they sourced unique containers, they found that it was a little difficult because supply chain issues, containers were not always available, but because they were doing so many different types of containers, they weren't looking for any one particular one. They mostly were just looking at size. So then every customer felt like they were special getting a unique one of a kind arrangement, when in reality, it really was just the vase that was a little bit different. The arrangements were all mass produced. And I thought that was a brilliant, brilliant idea. Now, while I pull together some flowers for this one, uh, I am going to do some red roses because we are talking Valentine's, so we should do something here. But while I get this together, Marisa, anything going on out there in Tulip Land on Facebook? And Parker, how about you two? Well, yes, I have quite the um, group of tulips over here. 
Let's start with Lisa, Casey, Jim, Cherie, Scott, who loves your outfit, as well as that container. <laughs> and Anne, who loves your earrings. And we have Joe, Roxy, Andrea, Carl, Lori, Kim, Robin, Wayne, Teresa, Amy, David, Pam, Beatrice, Marcel, Bethany, Julia, Deborah, Jen, and Roxy. However, Leah, Pam also said that she sold more mixed than just roses. And then between Anne and Amy, so remember the carnation heart you made? Mm -hmm. So Amy um, looks like sold those heart carnations as fast as she could make them. Excellent. Yeah, and then Anne actually made one for a tribute and then started um, people started calling for them and got orders for them. Excellent. Oh. You know, when you do something unique, it does set you aside. So congratulations, well done. Over here on YouTube, I don't have nearly as many folks, but there's a handful of names I don't recognize, which is great. We had Christy, Debbie, Dorothy, Tess, Kelly, Julia, C, Chelsea, Tess, Teresa, Jones, and then Charlene, who just passed her advanced final today. She did! I just signed the certificate. I believe that I remember that name crossing my desk, and I was like, oh, let me get this signed. I'm so proud of you. Good job. So those of you out there in YouTube land, it sounds like Parker didn't recognize the name, so we may have some first timers in there. Let us know if you're a first timer so that we can welcome you and get to know you. These co collaborations each week are a chance for us all to gather. And if you are a tulip, and everybody says, what's a tulip? Tulip is anybody who has graduated from flower school anybody who is a current Flower School student, and then all of the members of our Flower Lovers Club. And a special shout out to the members of our Flower Lovers Club because it's thanks to you that we can even exist and we can provide free education and free content because you help support our paid content. So TULIPs are students, graduates, and Flower Lovers Club members. And we really love you, TULIPs. If you are a TULIP, Put your tulip in there and let us know where you're from so that you can all start getting to know each other. I know when I was in Palm Springs for my little escape, I was able to meet up with Wayne, one of our tulips, because I know he lives down in Palm Springs because he adds his tulip and says Palm Springs. And so I could say, hey, let's get together. And it was grand fun. And I like to do that whenever I'm out and about. If I know a tulip is somewhere there, I look you up. I know a lot of us will be converging in July in Las Vegas and we'll be actually having a tulip gathering in person because that'll be something that will be pretty special. But we'll talk about that more next week. Um, this week let's stay focused on Valentine's. But if you're a first timer, let us know you're a first timer and where you're from. If you're a tulip, get your tulip posted and let us again know where you're from. And if you're not a tulip or a first timer, we still love you and get it to know us. Put your location in there so we know where you are. So I only have three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten roses in here because that's all the roses I have left. I didn't have any dozens left from our cooler. So we're going to pretend this is just a base arrangement and I'll talk about another technique that one of our tulips used is they had all of their things prepared practical things, things that they knew they could sell no matter what, be it a vase of roses or whatever. But they were prepared then to enhance and make things extra special. So rather than stop with just a vase of roses, if the person was willing to spend a little more going ahead and tucking in some carnations down low just to peek out from inside, and add value, and all of a sudden it's a little different than a standard vase of roses because it's unique. It's roses and carnations, and I know those are staple flowers, but all of a sudden your standard vase isn't the same as everybody else's standard vase. And then one tulip told us that they always added something spectacular if they could. And they would even do fewer roses, fewer flowers, so that they could add in something spectacular. 
So it might be like doing a vase and then coming back and adding in a stem of orchids so that it was just a little bit more spectacular. Now, granted, now it's going to be more expensive, but more expensive when the value is visible, people will pay it. Now, one thing that I wanted to point out, and so it's kind of interesting that you said they mentioned my dress, and my pin, my earrings, I dressed to stay on brand, the tulip brand. This is who we are. My dress is tulips. It's actually, well not all tulips, but there's tulips on here. It's actually locally made, so I like that. The pin is a tulip, thank you Drake. The earrings are tulips, thank you Lisa. Because I wanted to remember to remind you to stay on brand with your arrangements. If you never sell a basic dozen roses in a vase, don't do it on the holiday. Stay on your brand, your style, your designs. Your customer is going to be happier and it will be so much better. So something like this, tucking in the orchids, if you tend to work in a very decadent manner, shall we say, with fabulous cool flowers, do Valentine's in a decadent manner with fabulous cool flowers. Don't compromise yourself. Now, you might not get that casual shopper that is price shopping, that is not wanting to have your brand. It's okay. It's not your customer. It's not the one you need to worry about. One thing you got to kind of remember is you can only do so much. There's only so much time in a day and you need to take care of you. So saying no to a customer that isn't willing to pay your price or that doesn't have your style and aesthetic, that's okay. That's not your customer. And that saves your time to do the things for your customer that are fabulous with great flowers Maybe it's more expensive, but that's okay if it's fabulous and on your brand. So kind of thinking like that, rather than thinking, oh, I've got to do this because this is what everybody do, does. They all do that dozen roses and it's got to be cheap and oh my gosh, just don't do it. Just say no. I know that sounds harsh, but just say no. Because wouldn't it be more fun to design with Phalaenopsis orchids? I think so. I would do that. I'm going to set this aside. We'll get a good picture of it and it'll be posted in the Tulip group tomorrow and then we'll start sharing it out on social starting on Friday. Thursday the Tulip group gets it first. They get all the pictures at the very beginning. So while I set this aside, what else is going on? Well, I'd like to say, Leanne, I am not a huge fan of red and white and that looks spectacular on camera and everyone loves it so good job Leanne. sometimes you get lucky you know that's really all it comes down to i'm not a big fan of red and white either but when i was trying to clean out the cooler and figure out what i was going to do there was just a few red roses and a few white carnations i thought well i guess we're doing red and white um and then i got the fun stuff too because just because we're recapping valentine's doesn't mean we have to do everything red and white. We do have to stay on brand, and I encourage you to stay on brand, but then we just want to think about how to do things best. Another technique that was shared that was fabulous was being prepared to deal with all the little leftover items that are broken. You know, those things that you end up with that are too short to do anything with because they broke? And yet you paid money for this and you're like, oh my gosh, because the Noreen is gorgeous, but it's not going to go in an arrangement like that. This green trick was so cool, but I broke it actually filming today. Um, it was supposed to be in a hand type okay, but this is what it ended up with. And you know, we all have that happen. And this is actually a combo of two things I heard. One was a tulip shared that they did group pricing. 
And that would be buy one for, let's say, your wife or your husband or your significant other or your partner. Then would you like one for any other special person in your life? So that person was actually selling to a wife, a mother, a child, and doing Valentine packages with three or four. Of course, my little naughty mind immediately said, oh, and then girlfriend one, girlfriend two, and girlfriend three. Um, but that wasn't quite what the thing was. And I thought, how brilliant. And so then I extrapolated from the person that was sharing that they had individual little tiny vessels that anytime something broke, they would just take and put it into the tiny vat, like so, and like this one's a little bit longer so it could come like it's actually growing out of a little bit of grass oh isn't that too cute i love that and after they made the sale on the main arrangement they would say is there anyone that you want to do a little valentine for we have these small vases that we could just add right on if you'd like brilliant so then they buy the big arrangement and they might take a half a dozen little arrangements to pass out to little friends. So kind of combining there, one where they did the broken things and one where they just did multiple sales, which a multiple sales brilliant because you've got one customer, you've got one order, you may be only making one delivery or one pickup. I thought that was great. So, and that's something that can be done for any holiday, not just for Valentine's. So be thinking about that for Mother's Day coming up. Okay, Leanne, let's see. Over here, um, oh, Julia wanted to know if those phalaenopsis orchids um, would last more than a week. Oh, yes. Fails, oh my gosh. We do a lot of filming with fails, and I love them. And so many times after the filming is done and the photography is done, they accidentally end up at my house because they look good at my house. And I can keep them in my house for two weeks, sometimes three weeks, as long as I remember to keep them with water. Clue, note to self, needs water. They'll hold and hold and hold. So yes, you can keep orchids like that for a very long time. Leanne, Mary has a question about flower school. She wants to know how our courses could assist um, with her being that she has worked with silk for a lot of years. <laughs> well, perfect timing. That was Mary? Yes. Okay. Perfect timing, Mary, because I was just going to do some projects here talking about flower school. If you've already been designing with silks, permanents, maybe drives, going to flower school will enhance the skills that you already have and expand upon the techniques that you learn. You will need to work with fresh, which that will be a whole new medium, which is a little different bird, but then you can take the skills that you learn with fresh and translate them over to the permanence. I know many of our students are starting to do more work with the permanence, both dried and silk, because that's a growing, blossoming market and getting more and more popular. So they take the skills that they learned in the foundational with the fresh product and then translate it over. And I was thinking, okay, what do we do in flower school that could translate into preparation for coming holidays? And one of the things that I was thinking about was you've got to be really conscious of the time spent on each design. How many insertions does it take? to complete the design. Because if you're doing a hundred tiny little insertions, you don't have time to get the arrangements done. Whereas if you have a beautiful arrangement that just has three insertions because you pick big fabulous orchids and hydrangea, makes your life easier. Some of the techniques that we teach in flower school can be adapted in the pre-preparation, like right now, not as it gets close to Mother's Day, but right now when you maybe have a little bit of extra time because the orders have slowed down, it's after the holidays, maybe it's a snow day, people can't get out to buy flowers or have them delivered, so there's just this little extra time. And one of the techniques that we teach in the advanced course is the nesting and weaving and that armature construction. 
And we do it as a round in the advanced course, but it doesn't have to be round. It doesn't have to form any sort of bowl or anything. It can be all different shapes and it can be random. So this afternoon, um, after I was done doing some other things, I created this woven armature and used the same techniques that we teach in class but just did it more random and not rounded. It's much more um, just dimensional. I don't know what you would call it. It's, it's kind of round, but it's not rounded. And it is a combination of pussy willow and just dried branches, which I think actually came from Teacher Michelle's yard. Um, and they were still sitting here, and I thought, oh, I think that looks like it has my name on it. And then I just used bind wire, you know, similar to what we do in class, and took and just wove it together, finding where it can fit, and then lashed it in place using just a sprig of bind wire to hold it together so that all of this is a solid piece that you could do and have ready so that when the holidays come, you just go grab this off the shelf and work with it. And you don't have to spend design time, but yet this may be on brand with you where that detail work, the textures, the unique design aspect, this may be your brand. And you can do this if you do it in that pre-preparation time so that it's ready to go. Then when it's time to design, just get whatever vessel you're planning to use. It might be a good idea to add water to it. And then you just set it in place. Okay. Decide where's the front, where's the back, and you know, I have no idea. <laughs> So I'm just gonna make it so that, that stick doesn't poke me and put it on that side so that I don't run into it. But it doesn't really have a front or a back, which is the way I want it to be. And then if you want to, you can add a little bit more, maybe some pussy willow that helps anchor it into the vessel, just going down into the water like so, which also adds a little more dimension to the whole thing. So if you did advanced floral design, now you see another way to use that design that we did in the classroom that it doesn't look anything like what we did in the classroom. It looks totally different because it's just a technique. And once you know the technique, you can use it in so many different ways. You don't have to use it the way we taught you. That's when your creativity comes to play and you get to do it the way you want to, not the way that it was taught. So I'm just kind of sticking these things in. Then when I heard you know, that mixed arrangements were the thing and that roses were actually secondary, I thought, well, I can do that. And I grabbed, again, just a ton of little leftovers. Beautiful green hydrangea giving it a cut, nestling it in. Some dubium. I love the orange dubium. So wonderful. And that flower lasts forever. Dubium holds. It does. So, Leanne, you're, uh, you inspired Robin to go out and buy a pussy willow tree. I love it. <laughs> You know, in Pussy Willow, you can dry it and it'll hold so that you don't have to worry about it fuzzing out or anything. It is a beautiful, beautiful bloom to work with. Some Nareens. Maybe a Freesia. And again, thinking about the number of insertions, because by the time you're adding flowers on the holiday, you want it to be easy, but I've got one, two, three, four, five, six insertions. I'm just about done. Seven. Eight. Nine. 
So Bethany says, thank you, Leanne. She's um, a student of ours and also says um, that she learned so many flower names during lives <laughs> of things that she's never known the names of. That's why we try to use the right names when we're teaching, both on live and in the classroom, because if you keep hearing it, then you learn them. But if you don't hear the right name, there's no way you would ever be able to understand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Maybe I'll do another dubium. Leanne, speaking of dubium, um, are those known uh, by a different name? You know, it's in the Ornithogalum family, O-R-N-I, O-R-N-I-T-H-O-G, Ogolum, I don't know, Ornithogalum. Um, and so they're related to Star of Bethlehem, but Star of Bethlehem is the one that's white, Ornithogalum is the master family, and Dubium is the orange one. Yeah. So there's 10 insertions. It looks like way more than 10, because this whole portion was pre-done. And that's the key, is think about how you can stay on brand. Okay, can we be really obvious here? Stay on brand, stay true to yourself, and still be able to sell it quickly without having to work all night long. You know, my worst Valentine's ever, I actually did work all night long, I worked from seven in the morning, straight through all night, next morning, Valentine's Day, kept going, made my last delivery at eight o'clock at night, Valentine's night, because I took too many orders and I didn't have enough organization and I didn't have enough help. It was the worst holiday of my life. Luckily, we got everything out. And luckily, my staff didn't all just walk out on me. They should have. That was uncalled for. And it taught me a lesson. It taught me to say no. It taught me to really keep track of what I'm doing. Because I didn't make money that year because I paid so much overtime. And then we're just throwing flowers in. We just were... So we weren't counting what we were doing. We were just insane. So I bought too many flowers. I sold it too low of a price. I paid way too much in labor. I killed myself and everybody, Gretchen and Vicki and Lana. Oh my gosh, thank God you were with me. I thought Carla was gonna pull her hair out, but we got through it, but never again. I promised myself that would never ever happen. And that was when I was managing for Carla and she also made me promise that it would never ever ever happen again. And. It's hard sometimes when you have to say no, but if you don't say no, it's worse because you're not gonna do a good job because you can't get it all done. You have to be able to take care of yourself. That was another great, okay, we'll get a picture of this tomorrow. It may, may need a little bit of doctoring to make it perfect, but you get the idea. Okay. Um, another one of our tulips, shared that they focused on self-care this year and by that they planned ahead and they scheduled that they would close the Monday after Valentine's Day but they did hire a friend to answer the phone the Monday after Valentine's Day in case there was any problems because they didn't want to let problems fester and have people unhappy. So they got somebody who wasn't a florist to at least answer the phone and say, oh, they're going to want to know that. Oh, thank you for calling. Oh, we love you. Mm -hmm. Okay, bye. Um, and that sort of solved that problem. Turned out they didn't have a lot of calls, so that worked. But they scheduled that every single person had the day after Valentine's off. And then they scheduled and planned meals for themselves. And they scheduled it so that no one ever worked more than a 10 hour day. They did work some overtime, but nobody ever worked more than 10 hours. But for themselves and their family, they actually worked it out with another friend who prepared meals and brought the meal over to them every single night. Now, isn't that a great friend? Oh my gosh. But they said, you know, I could go home, I'm exhausted, 
and I just would open the door and there's food waiting for me. And in this day and age, many of us can just do that by DoorDash or delivery or whatever, but it's way more fun if it's homemade from a friend and somebody who cares. And so think about that. I thought, you know, scheduling that time off and scheduling meals so that you didn't have to think about it that day, because you know when you're exhausted and you've eaten, you're so tired and you need to eat, but you can't even make a decision, that eliminates that problem. You just don't have to make a decision. You just do it. And I thought, okay, brilliant. Tulip for the win. Okay, I'm going to grab some more flowers. You guys tell me what's happening. Keep me on schedule here. Back from the, the rose arrangement you did, uh, Gilda had said that she wasn't really a fond, or fond of red roses, but that you changed her mind with that arrangement. She'd love to have that one at her house. Oh, thank you. You know, I actually like red roses. I didn't for a long time, but the reason I like them now is more of the varieties open beautifully. And I think what made me not like them is when we used to get those really tight bullets that just stayed as a tight, tight bud and never did anything. And that just didn't appeal to me. And now with these beautiful reds that open into a gorgeous bloom, they just make me happy. I like those. Well, I still have um, a few more, several more tulips to do a shout out to that popped in. We have Pantanassus flowers, Deborah, Dorian, and we have about like seven Teresas. <laughs> <laughs> we have Karen, Olga, Jessica, Rick, Liana, Lynette, Lisa, Carrie, uh, Cindy, and Tanya, who's also joining us for the first time in Maryland. Hi, Tanya. Welcome. And Tulips, do a shout out and a welcome to Tanya so that she feels um, excited to be here, that she knows that she is welcome to be here. What I'm doing is I'm just grabbing, again, a lot of my little leftovers. I have a broken bloom, so we know that goes over into my little broken cup so that it makes somebody happy as a little leftover. And then I've got some ranunculus, some yellow roses that we had used in filming, and I thought, eh, I'll stick those in here. Some pincushion protea, which some people call it protea, others call it protea. I tend to go protea more often, but I just said protea, so I don't know. Uh, then the nerines, which are the hot pink, the common name, naked lady. And where that comes from is how it grows. Back in Indiana, by our farm, there are marine lilies that grow all over. And when they grow, it's like that, with just a little foliage down here, but not much. And it, I mean, it's just like this tall, naked stem. And it's a graceful lady. And so they call it naked lady, but it's all because of how it grows, which is kind of interesting. So I thought, um, thinking about designing for the holiday, um, thinking the number of insertions, thinking of convenience. One of the videos we shared with you was designing in bunches where you just had a lot of bunches pre-made and then if they spent a small amount of money they got one bunch. If they spent a modest but a little bit more money they might get three bunches. If they were a little more lavish and wanting it to be super spectacular, they might get 10 bunches and just put it in a bigger vase each time. And I thought, you know, that really makes the designing easy because you don't have to think about what is the price point. All the bunches cost the same, and then it's just how many bunches do they get. Marisa, what you got? Well, I have to, this just cracking me up. Scott says, well, that's how you get the business. You say you have naked ladies in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are a lot of, there is a lot of truth to that because if you make them look twice and then make them giggle, it makes them happy and you win. So yeah, we've got naked ladies at the flower shop today. Yeah. Makes me think of one, um, person I know that they had a brilliant idea. They didn't do it to tell me this time. It's something I've known for years and years, but they have a brilliant idea for Valentine's preparation. 
in that they let their best customers, let their best customers, get this, allow their best customers to come in and clean their roses. Hmm. They call it a stripping party. And they have an annual stripping party and all their best customers come in and they clean the roses. And it's a party. Can you imagine people coming and cleaning your roses for you? Ah, I love that idea. What else have you got? I mean, now, now everybody's just going off on that. First though, Leanne, did you know this? Um, apparently in uh, Indiana, they're also known as reservation flowers. I did not know that. Yeah, um, Diana shared that with us. Reserva uh, and what is that? What is the reasoning behind that? Does anybody know reservation flower? I've never heard that. That's pretty cool. Well, everyone is actually wanting to use this as a marketing tool to put that on Facebook. That that's what they have in their shop, and see the kind of response that they get. Who do you think is going to show up if that's what you're at? <laughs> I think everybody will look twice because they're, and then they're going to giggle and they're like, oh, how funny I'm on the this. joke. Wow, I think everyone's going, well, let us know how it goes, tulips. Yeah, that is good. Another technique that was shared um, that worked well for people was to collaborate with other businesses. So if you know a coffee shop, maybe tie in a cup of coffee and a bouquet. And so you actually deliver all the bouquets to the coffee shop. Then when they go in to pick up their coffee, they get a bouquet at the same time and everybody wins because you're making more sales, they're selling more coffee and it makes it convenient. So I thought that was a brilliant one as well. Kind of in summary, when I was talking to people, the things that came out most often was prepare ahead, okay, and then accurately price, which I can't impress upon that enough because if you don't price accurately, you can't afford to stay in business. You work way too hard to sell things at a loss. You deserve to be paid and you deserve to be paid appropriately. So accurate pricing, preparing ahead, then staying on brand and not being afraid to say no. Um, one tulip actually refused to do any roses. They just said, you know, we never sell dozens of roses. And they didn't say they wouldn't do roses, but they wouldn't do a standard dozen of roses. They said, that's not who we are. None of our designs ever are a dozen roses. And so they just said, no, we don't do that. But you can order a mixed arrangement with roses if you would like. And that way it will stay with the aesthetic that we're known for. And I thought, that's great. Sell to brand and stick with it. Then across the board, people were saying, learning when to say stop, that I have all the business that I can handle. And this is when I have to start saying no to everybody because I don't have any more. And I think that's a very important thing to remember is when do you say no because you can't do it. Now, it may be that you just say no to delivery or no to special requests, but you still have some cash and carry items that they can come in and pick up. So you're giving them an option there. But learning to know, to say, you know, no more special requests, that's all we can do. Yes, Marisa. Okay, so let's see. Thanks to uh, Barb. So, um, and I have to look this up, but they're also known as resurrection lilies. I had no idea that they're also in the amaryllis family. Apparently. They are in the amaryllis family, um, yes. But yeah, it says um, resur resur resurrection lily or surprise lily. And uh, Barb says the greenery comes up, dies back, and the flower comes up. So that's why it's called surprise lily. Okay. Resur resurrection lily. I love it. So I just did the bunch like you would have, and if they're doing a small arrangement, 
they get one bunch. But going back to the tulip that said, doing a practical design, ready to go, all of it there, but then having items, items ready to be able to enhance it. So like having that special vase, that would be one way. But there's other ways to do enhancing that all of a sudden this modest, pretty, but low-end arrangement can all of a sudden become a high-end, fabulous arrangement just through a little bit of change. And it can be as simple as switching to a larger vessel and then thinking back to the armature that I made, taught you in flower school, okay? And, oops, I had something in there. Thanks to teacher Marisa for building this for me today. We used it for something else, now I'm using it for this. But you know what, multi-purposing everything. So just like we teach you in flower school, how to build alternative mechanics, how to build structures, how to enhance, why not take that then and add in your low end bouquet, got that caught in my hand there, and turn it into a high end bouquet simply by enhancing it with a pre-made structure. So again, the structure is done months in advance. Get started now for Mother's Day. Make up your structures, have it be done. And then when it comes to the day, you just drop different flowers in to get different price points. Yes, Marisa? So Berga out in Iceland, apparently, um there's a couple shops out there that do not sell red roses, all the other colors, and then Drake ch chimed in and wanted to know possibly why. Well, that's a good question. So, why do they not? Although, I can remember meeting a gentleman in Illinois. Um, I'm not going to share his name because I've never had permission to share this story, but sharing it randomly, I will tell you, I was at a flower meeting and um, we were at dinner and having conversation and this person was beside me and we're chatting and this would have been clear back in the 80s probably so this is a long time ago um, prior to when florists had brands and images we were all just flower shops in the 80s it wasn't until this current generation that we started going oh we sell to brand this is who i am this is blah 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 i don't do roses i don't do that so this person clear back in the 80s was true to brand and would not sell roses of any kind carnations of any kind and the baby's breath period that was never in his store because his brand was known for, and I'm not gonna say this, but let's say this, and he felt that Rose's Carnations and Baby's Breath didn't fit the image that he wanted. And you know, he's an amazing, successful florist. He was on brand when brand wasn't cool. And at the time I was like, oh my gosh, I was aghast. How could that possibly be? I thought he was the stupidest person in the world. And looking back on it, I thought, you know, you were brilliant. You learned to say no and do what you love in the way that you love. So, um, kind of fun. So we'll get a picture of that one too for you guys so that everybody can see it. Coming back to this one, I want to do one more enhancement, but what's going on out there? Uh, I had some people asking about if they wanted to register to take the AIFD exam in Vegas. How do they go about doing that? What do they need? Um, and that's what our focus is next week. Um, our live next week is going to be all about preparation for the AIFD testing in Las Vegas. I believe it's on July 3rd this year. Uh, don't quote me on that. I'll make sure I know exact date next week. But next week we'll be talking about that. Um, your flower school, 
Basic and Advanced gives you the education and the foundation that you need and sets you off in the right direction. Then once you have that foundation of the education and your certification, then it's your practice that builds your proficiency and your confidence, getting the techniques down and the speed, and then we have a training program and a designing for competition class that's very, very focused to get you ready for that as well. Uh, I know the AIFD website currently has the registration form available, so you can declare yourself as a candidate now. I know we have several TULIPs that are planning to test and have already declared themselves and registered and such, and we've been working with several because of COVID for longer than normal, but this year it looks like everything's going to happen and in person and uh, doing it well. So next week, be sure to join us. Um, and if anybody is thinking about it, pass the word on to them so that they know. Another thing that we teach in flower school that I wanted to go into that enhancing, um, because I heard that so many times, it was truly, prepare ahead and then be ready to enhance at that last minute. And one of the things that we teach in advance, the technique of wrapping, and so those of you that remember doing the wrapping with a tool, a power tool, um, this is just wire that I wrapped with yarn and then I squiggled it around so that it had an interesting shape and I did several of them just because. I don't remember when I did this. I did this for something, maybe it was a video, and they were still sitting on the shelf and I just thought, ah, well that kind of works kind of nice. But you can pre-wrap wires or mitolino with coordinating colors. If it was for Valentine's, you might want to focus on pink and red and white. Or if it's not Valentine's, you might love this kind of golden orange hue, which I liked that one. Um, I had to learn to knit simply so I could buy yarn and then I realized there are so many other ways to use yarn and so I kind of quit knitting um, but it was fun to learn and I have so many knitted scarves and hats now but uh, it's just kind of fun well I, while I fuss with this what else is going on so Leanne, uh, Scott shared with us one of um, another trick of theirs that they use to upsell for Valentine's Day Okay, so they had a really wow arrangement on the counter. People would see it and want to buy it, and then they would say, it's a special order going out, um, and we can add flowers to your arrangement to make it similar. Brilliant! So then you have the one that's always there, so you don't destroy your display, and yet you add multiple sales. Excellent. As I finish adding these in, so you can just see how quickly all the, you know, every little step you do enhances and adjusts the perceived value. And if you can do it using things that you prepare ahead of time, so that then you just add it at the last minute, you win because it fits within the framework of what you can do. But as I was thinking about this and I was talking to so many different tulips and gathering data and saying well, how'd it go what was it the question that came up frequently was how do you determine success okay what means that it worked what tells you that it really was what you wanted to accomplish and success can be defined so many different ways. It can be success in the volume of orders that you filled. And that success varied from one tulip shared that they made their very first sale ever on Valentine's Day. It was one sale, but it was their first sale ever. I mean, how exciting is it? That's success. And then another tulip shared the thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars and hundreds of orders that they did. 
That was success. And then some people define success as being able to work within their allotted hours. So going home at six o'clock every night and still having the orders completed, that was success. And some defined it as selling out. It didn't matter if it was five orders or 50 orders, if they sold out, it was success. And I would have to agree with that. So as you start planning forward to the next holidays, determine what do you want to sell? Do you want to sell bunches? Do you want to sell unique? Do you want to sell a vase? Then think about how many of those can you physically do? Get kind of a count. Well, I could do five of these a day, or I could do 50 of these a day. It doesn't matter what that number is. Just come up with what that number is. And then think about deliverability. Can you set this in a box and get it delivered? One tip was having a wrap station totally set and ready. So there's boxes and craft paper and string and ribbon and everything all in one station. So that when they wanted to wrap a bouquet, they just walked over there, wrapped it. They didn't have to hunt for things and they didn't have to hunt for a place. They had a station set for that. And if you needed to get this into a box to be able to go out, the boxes are stacked right there, pre-made and they just grab it and go. Brilliant. Then think about what it's going to cost you. And I know you don't know the exact price you're going to pay on that day, but you can guess and at least get an, a random start and then start recipeing out to your price point so that when it comes time to make it, you just make it. You don't have to worry about it. All these little tiny steps are what makes it success. And then for me, I would have to say success always includes having time to take care of myself. So if I get to stop and have lunch, I feel like I win. If I have to keep designing and shoving food in my mouth at the same time, I don't count that as a win. I like to be able to sit down and enjoy my lunch. And having dinner, I love dinner. I love food. Those of you that know me know that David cooks and I eat. And it's just one of those things that that to me is success if you have time to eat and if you have time to sleep. And so I wish you all success. Now we'll take pictures of these. As you think of more ways to determine success, go ahead and type it in there. Let us know. What are your thoughts? Because we can read through these later too. So even if it's over now, go ahead and type in your thoughts. What is success? Share this out so that more people see it, because to me, that's success. That's what I need. And then next week, we'll all be back and we'll be talking about the AIFD testing. We'll be talking more about flower school. We have school starting on Monday. I believe there is one space left in this class. Um, I was looking at the tables and everything. I think we have one spot left. So if you want to join me on Monday, we can have you. Online, it's been busy. I know Teacher Carolyn is out there right now. I forgot to give a shout out to Teacher Carolyn. Sorry about that, Carolyn, we love you. Teacher Carolyn has been keeping our online students going boom, 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 boom. That's why I'm graduating so many people um, because she's got them on task and a lot of them are trying to get graduated so they can come to flower school in person for advanced. And that's happening too. So if you're ready for flower school, come join us. Next week I'll see you, same time, same place, three o'clock, and uh, hopefully you'll be here. Hopefully this gave you some ideas for your next holidays and inspired you to work a little bit more successfully in all your future endeavors. But thanks for joining me. Thanks, Susie. Thanks, Caledonia. Thanks, Carolyn. Thanks, Parker and Marisa. And thank you for joining me. You make my life special and you make me feel like a success when you come join. Talk to you later, bye for now.